In this video, we're going to focus on identifying oxidizing and reducing agents. What you need to know is that oxidation involves a loss of electrons. Reduction involves a gain of electrons. In addition, if the oxidation number increases, oxidation has occurred. If the oxidation number decreases, reduction has occurred. So let's try this example that we have on the board. What is the oxidation state of magnesium metal? The oxidation state of any pure element in its natural state is zero. So the oxidation state of elemental bromine is also zero. Now, in a compound, it can be different. Magnesium is in group two of the periodic table, and magnesium typically forms a plus two charge. Bromide usually has a minus one charge. And you can see in this formula, it takes two bromide ions to neutralize the positive two charge on the magnesium cation. So clearly we can see that magnesium has a plus two oxidation state and each individual bromine atom has a minus one oxidation state. For magnesium, the oxidation state increased from zero to plus two. Because the oxidation number went up, oxidation has occurred for magnesium. Magnesium was oxidized. Now, bromine was reduced. Notice that the oxidation number for bromine decreased from 0 to negative 1, so therefore it was reduced. Now, the substance that is oxidized is also known as the reducing agent, and the substance that is reduced is also known as the oxidizing agent. Now, you might be wondering, well, why is that? Why is that the case? The reducing agent is the substance that causes the other element to be reduced. So magnesium is considered the reducing agent because it causes bromine to be reduced. On the other hand, bromine is the oxidizing agent because it causes the other substance, magnesium, to be oxidized. So make sure you reverse it. As long as you reverse it, you're going to get the right answer. So now, let's try another example. So consider this reaction. Zinc metal reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen gas and zinc chloride. Now what I want you to do, I want you to pause the video and try this practice problem yourself. And then unpause it to see if you have the right answer. So let's begin. What is the oxidation state of zinc? For any pure metal in its natural state, if you have a pure element, it's zero. Now in HCl, you need to realize that hydrogen usually has a plus one charge. And chlorine, like all of the other halogens, like chlorine, bromine, iodine, fluorine, as an ion, they typically have a minus one charge. So the oxidation state of hydrogen is plus one, and for chlorine, it's minus one. Now here we have elemental hydrogen gas. We don't have a compound, we have a pure element. So the oxidation number for elemental hydrogen is always going to be zero. It's zero for any pure element. Now here we have a compound. Now we know that chloride has a minus one charge. So, and there's two of them, which means that zinc has to have a plus two charge. Now if you feel a little unsure why zinc has a plus two oxidation state, you can write an equation. Zinc plus the two chlorine atoms should have an oxidation state of zero because overall zinc chloride is neutral. So we're going to solve for the oxidation state of zinc. So let's replace zinc with an X uh, symbol. And we know that chlorine as an ion has a minus one charge. So let's uh, replace Cl for negative one. So right now we have X minus two is equal to zero. So if we add two to both sides, we're, we're going to get the oxidation state of zinc, which is uh, plus two. And so that's one way you can calculate it if you're ever unsure. So now let's finish this problem. So we see that the oxidation number for zinc increased from zero to plus two. So zinc was oxidized. It lost two electrons. Now, the oxidation state for hydrogen decreased from 1 to 0, 
so therefore it was reduced. The hydrogen atoms, or the hydrogen ions, they gained electrons, which is associated with reduction. Now the substance that is oxidized is also known as the reducing agent. And the substance that is reduced is the oxidizing agent. So zinc is considered the reducing agent because it caused the other substance, hydro hydrochloric acid, to be reduced. And the hydrochloric acid is the oxidizing agent because it caused the other substance, zinc, to be oxidized. So I hope that makes sense. But let's go ahead and try another example for the sake of practice. So let's say if uh, we have uh, sodium bromide plus chlorine gas, and it's going to produce a solution of sodium chloride plus liquid bromine. Now, go ahead and identify the oxidizing and the reducing agent. Sodium typically has a plus one charge. As an alkali metal, it's always going to have a plus one charge. Bromide is a halogen, and most halogens usually form minus one charges. Now, chlorine is a pure element, so it's going to be zero, and bromine, Br2, is a pure element. So now, which substance is oxidized, and which substance is reduced? Notice that sodium is the spectator ion. The charge on sodium doesn't change, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, notice that for bromine, the oxidation state increased and went up from negative 1 to 0. So therefore, we could say uh, the bromide ion within sodium bromide was uh, oxidized. And if you look at Cl2, the oxidation number decreased from 0 to minus 1. And so we could say that chlorine was reduced. So therefore, chlorine is the oxidizing agent, and sodium bromide is the reducing agent. If you notice, most metals, like zinc and magnesium in the last two examples that we've considered, most uh, elemental metals, they tend to form uh, reducing agents, like Zinc and magnesium are good reducing agents. Most nonmetals in their elemental form, like Cl2, like chlorine, bromine, most nonmetals usually form good oxidizing agents, like oxygen, O2. Oxygen is a nonmetal, and it's a good oxidizing agent. In fact, the word oxidizing agent comes from oxygen. So what about uh, this example? H2 plus O2 turns into H2O. So feel free to pause the video and try this example. So hydrogen gas on the left, it's in its elemental form, so it has an oxidation state of zero. Oxygen also has an oxidation state of zero. Now in water, in a compound, it's going to be different. Oxygen usually forms a minus two charge, and for hydrogen, when it's bonded to a nonmetal, it usually has a plus one charge. Now hydrogen, when bonded directly to a metal, typically has a, a negative one oxidation state. But when bonded to a nonmetal, it's plus one. So now if we focus on the hydrogen atoms, we can see that hydrogen went up from zero to one. So therefore, hydrogen was oxidized. Now oxygen decreased from 0 to negative 2. So because it gained two electrons, it was reduced. Reduction occurred. Hydrogen lost an electron as it went from 0 to 1. Now the substance that is oxidized is the reducing agent. And the substance that is reduced is the oxidizing agent. So we can see that O2 is the oxidizing agent and H2 is the reducing agent. So now let's work on our final example. Chlorite plus perchlorate yields chlorate. So go ahead and identify the oxidizing and the reducing agent. 
Now we need to find the oxidation state of every element in this compound or in this uh, equation. Whenever oxygen is bonded to another element, typically it has a negative two charge. So for every oxygen that's in this equation, it's going to have an oxidation state of negative two. The exception is if oxygen is bonded to fluorine, in that case it's going to have a positive oxidation state or if it's in the form of peroxide or superoxide. In the form of oxide, it has a minus two oxidation state. In peroxide, it has a negative one oxidation state. In superoxide, it has a negative one half oxidation state. But we don't have to worry about that for this example. So let's start with chloride. Let's calculate the oxidation state of chlorine in chloride. So we have Cl plus two oxygen atoms, and it has a net charge of negative 1. So let's replace Cl with X and let's plug in negative 2 for oxygen. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 and if we add 4 to both sides we can see that X is equal to positive 3. So that's the oxidation state of chlorine in chloride. So now let's do the same thing but for chlorine in perchlorate. So we have one chlorine atom plus four oxygen atoms and the net charge is minus one. So four times negative two is negative eight. And if we add eight to both sides, negative one plus eight is seven. So that's the oxidation state of chlorine in ClO4. So now let's do the same thing for chlorine. You can probably see that it's going to be plus 5. But we'll work out the example. So we have Cl plus 3 oxygen atoms equals a net charge of negative 1. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And uh, if we add 6 to both sides, we can see that negative 1 plus 6 is plus 5. So that's the oxidation state of chlorine and chlorate. So now, there's two chlorate ions on the right side. So one of the chloride ions turns into chlorate, and the other perchlorate ion turns also into chlorate. So here, chlorine went from 3 to 5. So it lost two electrons, and the oxidation number went up. So therefore, the chlorine atom in ClO2 was oxidized. And the chlorine atom in perchlorate, it went from 7 to 5. So it gained two electrons. It was reduced. So reduction occurred. Therefore, the chloride ion is the reducing agent. And the perchlorate ion is the oxidizing agent. And so that's it. So now you know how to identify the oxidizing and the reducing agent. So I hope this all makes sense to you, and thanks for watching.